Does the truth have to hurt? Not always, and we'll tell you why this week on Motoring 2005. SN's Motoring 2005 is brought to you by Quaker State Motor Oil, oils fine-tuned for different engines, and Midas, Total Car Care, we do that. The North American Auto Show in Detroit is without a doubt the largest gathering of car manufacturers and media anywhere in the world. It's a golden opportunity for manufacturers to showcase its product. Now, the product changes every year, but the message is always the same. To design vehicles that add momentum, excitement. The results are two exciting new concepts. Real teeth in the promise of Pontiac excitement. Everybody is always excited about its product and business is good even when it's not. Well, this week we're on the coast of the state of Oregon where the sea air is as refreshing as this morning's technical meeting concerning the new Tucson. Now, the meeting began with the president and CEO of Hyundai, Steve Kelleher, simply saying, sales are down and we're not happy. But we know what the problem is and how to fix it. So this week we're going to check out not only the new Tucson, but discover how Hyundai is now prepared to change the face of the company once again. They've built a much better product, and the product is well worth having for, for consumers. The problem is that they've still marketed it only on the cheap aspect, which they'll have to continue to do. They'll always be uh, a budget performer. But they can also offer more values now. The quality, the driving uh, capabilities, the, uh, you know, the looks, everything. And they've got to focus on, the, on that rather than zero down, zero money, you know, for 10 months or whatever it is. Hyundai has a, has a very ambitious goal, and that's to become the number five uh, automaker in the world. And uh, right now we sit seventh, and uh, so we have a lot of ground to make up. But uh, right from the top down, the plans have been put in place to, to achieve that goal. And yes, you know, this year was a disappointment, but not unexpected. And uh, I, I like to think that uh, uh, we took the opportunity to do the things that we need to do for the future. They also admitted that, for instance, this car is quite, uh, the Tucson is quite similar in size to their own Santa Fe, and they may get some cannibalization, but they're willing to accept that to get a bigger piece of that whole SUV sport cute market. So it was very refreshing to hear such honesty and transparency from a car company. Usually we get baffle gap. The product that's on the road now is, is, is doing great for us, the, uh, and you can tell that from the quality scores that we've received just this past year. Our Sonata was uh, number one in uh, IQS, the J.D. Power IQS uh, survey, and that's our current product that, that's been on the, on the streets uh, now for, you know, we're at the end of our product cycle of most of our models, and they've been on the streets for four to five years. The exciting thing is uh, a whole new wave of product is, is uh, coming at us and it starts with the Tucson. It's a compact SUV, uh, very very nice styling to the vehicle, uh, comes in a number, number of different trim levels including a four cylinder or a V6 model, um, comes in two wheel drive and four wheel drive, two wheel drive very popular in Canada among Canadians, uh, definitely an alternative to, to a wagon or a minivan for sure. The horsepower in the uh, uh, V6 is 173 horsepower, uh, four cylinders 140, it's a CVVT engine which has a constant variable valve timing, so again a high tech feature for the uh, Tucson. Tucson, it's really good, I mean it's, uh, it starts at 1995 with uh, like a four cylinder engine, five speed admittedly, but it's got like uh, trash control, stability pro uh, control program, uh, a CD player, it's a well equipped car for less than 20,000 bucks. Is there one product you've got right now, one vehicle that you're the most proud of that's been doing a lot for this company? Santa Fe, without a doubt. Um, 
It's turned, uh, I think, the perception in Canada about uh, Hyundai turned it around more than anything else. Uh, world-class product, um, and it's uh, surpassed our sales projections for it uh, this year. In fact, last month, uh, we, uh, we had the largest selling compact SUV in Canada. But you know what? The Tucson is even better, and that's what, that's what really excites us. Uh, with the, every product that the factory is bringing out is, is better than the last, and uh, so we're, we're, we're uh, just uh, over the moon about what the future holds for the company. The thing is, they'll have to move the Santa Fe away in another bracket. Because for now, from what I've tried this morning, uh, I could easily choose that over a Santa Fe for less money. Santa Fe is due for a change next year. They'll probably have to uh, position it closer to what they do with the Sorento at Kia. A little bigger, uh, leave the 3.5 and probably left the other engine behind and make it a mid-size uh, vehicle instead of a, a compact. We're thinking at this point that the uh, two-wheel drive uh, V6 model will be the best-selling um, trim level. Uh, as with our Santa Fe, that is our best-selling trim with well over 50% of the sales. Uh, however, the four-cylinder uh, coming with an automatic transmission will also be uh, uh, big, but in the two-wheel drive configuration will be the uh, model that does the best for sure. Drives good, I'm very impressed with the chassis. Wouldn't mind if the V6 was a three liter instead of a 2.7, but other than that, big value, uh, which is what we've come to expect from Hyundai. I'm giving my money away, and I'm happy about it. More later on Kenzie's Corner. Whether it's Bay Street or the boonies, the Jeep Grand Cherokee has earned a reputation of being able to take you there any time you want to go. For 2005, this legend has been redesigned from the ground up. Now, whilst it doesn't look particularly different, beneath its shiny new sheet metal, it most certainly is. While the new look is not overwhelmingly different, most, in fact, will be hard-pressed to tell the differences without the old and new being parked beside each other, the new Grand is a radically different vehicle. To begin with, the new body is 60% stiffer in both bending and torsional rigidity, and it earns a completely new double wishbone front suspension and a tweaked version of last year's multi-link rear suspension. Combined, this gives the Grand Cherokee a very poised feel, especially considering the ground clearance and higher center of gravity. While the Grand is no sports car, it did do very well through the pylons, which is more than can be said for most SUVs. When you get to your favorite off-road spot, getting into four low is very simple. Select neutral, lift up on a lever, and Bob's your uncle, the system does the rest. You also realize very quickly that after you've done a bit of boonie bashing, this thing is all but unstoppable. That boils down to three electronically controlled locking differentials and traction control. Combined, the two mean that even if only one wheel's got traction, well, you're gonna keep going. Having selected four low, the Grand Cherokee rumbles up steep grades without so much as breaking a sweat. And when the terrain does get really gnarly, that sophisticated all-wheel drive system steps to the fore as the electronic overseers step in before the wheels break free. By monitoring throttle input, the system recognizes when the driver is using a heavy boot, and so it divvies up the power before any are allowed to spin, which is very beneficial considering the power at play. This new Grand Cherokee is offered in three very different flavors. Enough, more than adequate, and simply outrageous. The 3.7 liter V6 provides enough power. The 4.7 liter V8 is more than adequate. However, if you're into outrageous, there's only one way to go. The 325 horsepower version of the 5.7 liter Hemi V8. Now, as impressive as the horsepower is, it's the torque on tap that really does impress. With 370 pounds feet, well, when it's time to go, you go in one serious hurry. 
The Hemi really does give the Jeep a good dose of personality. Along with instantaneous throttle response comes one of the meanest exhaust notes around. True, it's not like a Ferrari at full chat, but the throaty burbling tells the world you mean business. The only transmission offered is a slick shifting 5-speed automatic with a manual mode. While the manual mode is of limited value on-road, off-road it allows the driver to take advantage of engine braking on a long descent and hold the right gear on a steep climb. The rework of this Grand Cherokee has been very well thought through for the most part. You get a rear wash wiper that's very much needed and a back glass that opens independently of the tailgate. However, it's when you lift the tailgate that you realize the redesign didn't go quite far enough. It'll only carry 35 cubic feet of stuff when the middle row of seats are in the upright position. To put that into perspective, Dodge's own Durango will swallow twice that amount when in a five-seat configuration. As for the luxury side, the Full Zoot Limited comes loaded to the gunnels with creature comforts. Everything, in fact, from an intuitive navigation system and comfortable leather seating to all the power options known to man, as well as a DVD-based entertainment system. It also comes with all the mandated safety stuff. Along with a mitt full of airbags, including drop-down side curtains, there's electronic stability control and an effective set of anti-lock brakes, which do a particularly good job of hauling the heavy ground to a halt. It also includes rollover protection. Simply, if the system senses the Jeep is about to roll, it applies the anti-lock brakes to steer it out of trouble. This new Grand Cherokee is the best to date, and primarily because it gets more of just about everything. More power, more off-road ability, more luxury, more convenience, more comfort. You name it, it gets more of everything except cargo capacity. And unfortunately, in a market where utility is of paramount importance, that's a pretty significant flaw. Our Midas tip of the week concerns driving in poor visibility conditions. What started out as an awful ugly day just three or four hours ago is starting to clear up. It's about noon right now, but at nine o'clock this morning, out on Canada's busiest highway, we had a heavy fog, heavy on and off showers, and a lot of vehicle traffic, so a lot of road spray causing poor visibility. Now, when you look to the west, you see that every car that comes over the top of that hill, or nearly every car, has its headlights on, thanks in part to daytime running lights. But when we look to the east, those same vehicles, we look at the taillights, we see very few with the taillights on. And that tells us that most drivers haven't reached over to the dash or the steering column and turned their full headlight package on as they should do in poor visibility conditions. Make sure that anytime you're driving in low visibility conditions, like fog, rain, snow, early in the evening or early in the morning, you've got your full headlight package on for maximum safety. As a matter of fact, in some areas, some jurisdictions, New York State, for example, if you're driving with your wipers on, it's the law that you must have your headlights on. But that's a practice we should all adopt for better visibility and better road safety. That's your Midas tip of the week. Certainly the DNA is there, the heritage is there, but what Ford has done, of course, is totally upgraded it with a brand new uh, platform. And the new one has uh, got the latest in technology, but you can see that it still retains the same pony car tradition as the original Mustang. The Allure is a mid-size sedan. It replaces the Century and Regal. It has an all-new design. It has a quiet, very quiet, if not one of the quietest interiors in the mid-size segment. Notably improved ride and handling and a powerful new engine. 
The Allura will come in two engines. The base engine will be the very reputable yet refined 3800 V6. 200 horsepower, 230 pound-feet of torque. It has NVH improvements like a structural oil pan and it has electronic throttle control now that it didn't have in the past. The up-level engine is a 3.6 liter VVT, the variable valve timing. People know it in the CTS and the Rendezvous Ultra. It has 240 horsepower, 225 pound-feet of torque, delivers approximately 90% of its torque in a very wide operating range from about 1,500 to 6,000 RPM. Also has vehicle stability enhancement system available in the up-level vehicle, offers a dual stage airbags, one of the first vehicles to also offer the suppression system so that if you have a very lightweight person uh, sitting in the passenger side, it'll shut off the airbag. Buick used to have a slogan, when better cars are built, Buick will build them. I don't know about that, but it sure is a better Buick. I like the ride. They said that, you know, the old floaty Buick ride was gone. It really is. Uh, and some of the hills around here that, you know, you reach the top and you think, okay, here's where we get that long suspension travel and the floaty feeling. Not there. Handles very nicely. Rides, rides better than maybe any Buick you've ever been in. Initial impressions are refinement. Uh, it's still very much a Buick. Uh, nobody's going to confuse it with a Accord or a Camry. But they've done a wonderful job of, of on NVH in particular, especially a very, very quiet car. I like the dash, the whole in interior a lot better than the older style, but I repeat it, it's still a Buick. This has done a good job. You know, the problem that a Buick brand has to convince the world that it's got a competitive product is 25 to 30 years of brand neglect. I mean, they have not invested in the product significantly. So yeah, sure, I think the uh, NVH, uh, noise, vibration, and harshness in this uh, 2005 Allure Lacrosse in the U.S. Is, is certainly competitive, if not better, than a Toyota Camry, which has been their target all along. It's not a Lexus. They want, they want to kill Camry. Um, but you got to get people in the car and you got to get them believing and that's a that's a really difficult challenge for Buick because of the way they've neglected the brand and the products for almost three decades. As we heard earlier the Hyundai Santa Fe introduced in 2000 has been a huge success for the company. The question is will the new Tucson cannibalize Santa Fe sales? Well Hyundai's answer you can never have enough customers coming into your showroom. In short it's not worried. All right, let's head to the Quaker State Garage and join Bill Gardner. Brad, I had a really interesting Monday morning service call just a week or so ago. One of my regular customers came out, started the car up. It had sat over the weekend while they were away. Started the car up, fired up no problem, but the oil light didn't go out on the dash and the engine was making some serious mechanical noises. Fortunately, they had the presence of mind to shut it off right away and stop right there. They got out, lifted the hood, pulled the dipstick out, no oil in the dipstick. Now that could be just down two liters of oil on an engine that holds four or five liters of oil. It goes off the dipstick at about two or two and a half liters of oil. But in this case, when we investigated a little bit further, we looked underneath the vehicle, found a small pool of oil, and uh, upon further inspection, found that the oil drain plug, the last person who had changed the oil had replaced the oil drain washer on this plug, which is a common practice for oil change places. They had changed it and put on a plastic washer. Now plastic washers worked fine in the 60s and 70s when engines ran a lot cooler and engine oil temperature was much lower than it is on today's cars. This plastic was okay, but it will not work. It's not acceptable for modern engines. There's the actual drain screw that came out of the car in question. From this side it looks normal, but when we flip it over you can see that the plastic washer, which looks normal around the back side here, is misshapen over here and it popped over the edge and all the oil leaked out. Now instead of this plastic washer, what should have been on there is an aluminum washer and there it is right there and that's what should have been on that drain screw, that's what's on the car at the factory or you can buy it at the dealership. But with this one, it's absolutely impervious to engine temperature and it'll never change shape or loosen. So when you get your oil changed, ask these guys to specifically not change the washer on your oil drain to a plastic one. In many cases, their heart's in the right place. They think that new is better. But if they're changing a metal or fiber washer to plastic, they're creating you a serious problem at some time down the road. Till next week, I'm Bill Gardner for Motoring 2005. For more information on past and future episodes of Motoring, log on to the Motoring website at motoringtv.com. 
where you can email your suggestions, questions, and comments, which are always welcome. That's MotoringTV.com. The sad fact of the automotive retail environment in this country these days is incentives. The customers may like it, but it's bad for the industry long term. Still, if you don't give somebody a rebate or a subsidized interest rate, they're going to buy their car somewhere else. And it's the same thing with locating car factories. The car companies know that they can go to the provinces, the states, or the federal governments and say, listen, we need a couple hundred million dollars in infrastructure improvement, or we need some training bonuses, and if you don't give it to us, we'll go somewhere else. So what are we supposed to do? I mean, I don't like giving my tax dollars to private corporations any more than the next guy. But what's the alternative? Go to Mexico? Go to China? I mean, this deal that Ford just did with uh, Oakville and Ontario and the federal government of Canada, it's going to maintain a whole bunch of jobs down there. It's going to include a research facility, R&D jobs. These are high-tech jobs for engineers and technicians into fuel cell vehicles. That's the technology of the future. What's the alternative? They're going to pay that back that money in a couple of months in, in uh, tax revenues anyway. If we lose those jobs, we're going to have to support a couple of thousand people on welfare. There's no return on that particular investment. So whereas I don't like it, the governments don't like it, I'm not even sure the car companies like it. The fact is, it's the only alternative. Otherwise, that factory is not going to be in Oakville, Ontario. It's going to be in Runny Nose Bend, Mississippi. I'm Jim Kenzie. You know, this is my first visit to the state of Oregon, and I had no idea how beautiful the coastline is. It looks a lot like California. A few final thoughts on the new Hyundai Tucson. It's a terrific little sport utility, and it's great value. But you know, the Tucson is just the beginning of a lot more product that Hyundai is planning, as it strives to give itself and you, the consumer, a fresh look. That's it for now. We'll see you next time, Moto, as we continue to bring you more stories about cars and the people who drive them. This is not for the American supersized group. This is for the people who actually um, love to drive. They don't eat in their cars, they, but they love their cars. They, they thrive for this car. TSN's Motoring 2005 has been brought to you by Quaker State Motor Oil, oils fine-tuned for different engines, and Midas, Total Car Care, we do that.